Hello and welcome to Spencerville High School and High School Basketball on WOSN. Alongside the coach, Scoot Miller, I'm Evan Skilleter, and it's the walk-in closet tonight as Spencerville hosts Crestview on opening night of Northwest Conference Basketball. Scoop, I am so excited to be with you for this matchup. What a way to open up the Northwest Conference season. These two teams have combined to win seven of the last ten Northwest Conference titles. Right here, they squared off week one. And both teams come into tonight 3-0. and oh, And let's talk about some keys to the game, Scoop. Let's start with the Spencerville ba Bearcats. Again, 3-0 and oh this season. Now, Bluffton did win the Northwest Conference Championship last year, but both these teams were looking uh, at that top spot. How about Spencerville tonight? I think for Spencerville, they have to limit turnovers, particularly those light ball turnovers that might lead to runouts and easy transition opportunities. The second team's going to be rebound. They have to limit those second teams. Defensive end, find a way to hit the offensive glass, extend their offensive possession. And for Crestview, Coach Doug Etzler's boys also come into tonight 3-0, and oh, led by senior Gavin Etzler, 19 points per game, 73% from outside. Scoop, how about their keys to victory? I think for the Knights, it's going to start with transition defense. They've got to stop the ball early, find the shoot. have to win those one-on-one defensive battles with the Spencerville guards. To do that, they've got to be physical enough to reroute them outside the lane, maybe force some tough twos. If they can execute those areas, they can end a five-game losing streak to the Knights. Excellent. Well, thank you, Scoop. We will step aside as the national anthem about ready to be played here at Spencerville when we return. It's the Bearcats, the Knights, and high school basketball on WOSN. Welcome back to Spencerville where the starting lineups are about to be read. We'll get them for you as well. First for Spencerville, they start with senior number three, Josh Henline. He averages 19.7 points per game. He starts along with Evan Osting, Dylan Smith, Carter Sudhoff, and Dylan Cook on the other side for the Knights. As we mentioned, both teams 3-0. The Knights off to a great start alongside their senior leader, Gavin Etzler. He averages 19 points, as we said, in the pregame. 73% from outside for Gavin Etzler. He starts with number five, Mitch Temple. Number 10, Carson Hunter. Number 25, Nate Lickley. Excited to be here tonight for this opener in the Northwest Conference. And we're getting the cheerleaders read. And Scoop, I'll tell you what, you, you mentioned it. Northwest Conference history starts and stops with Crestview and Spencer. Coach Doug Etzler in his fourth year at the helm of the Crestview Knights, 50 and 23 overall. A guy that is in the record books at Crestview, played some basketball at Ohio State, and right now he's got some family down in Columbus. Coach Sensible for Spencerville, also in the Spencerville record books. You can see his jersey up on the wall. It's not really his jersey, but it is a replica. Kevin Sensible, class of 1995, 1,456 points at Spencerville. And now his son, Owen, plays for this varsity team. He's just a freshman, but he shoots from outside very well. Just about ready for tip. The student section at Spencerville extremely excited for this game. They call it the walk-in closet. Now, this 
facility was built in 2005, 2006 time frame when I was just getting into high school. I never got to play at the old closet, but it sounds like it was quite the environment over there. Here we are in the tip-off circle. It will be Carter Sudhoff tipping out against Ren Sheets, and it's Crestview and Sheets winning the tip, and they will start things off with Mitch Temple. Knights running it around the perimeter. This is Temple on the left. They go inside, up, and in. That's Ren Sheets, averages seven points a game and gets the first bucket tonight on the Charles River scoreboard. And look at that, Josh Enline, one for one from outside. The man averages 19 points a game, 40% from beyond the arc, and he made that look easy. One minute in, Crestview trying to respond on the other end. Ball swung around to Carson Hunter. Hunter guarded by Henline. Haven't seen too many touches from Etzler. He's been face guarded. He gets it there, gives it off to Hunter. Hunter goes inside, a foul called, and it's of the offensive variety. Inside they go, and an offensive foul at the other end. That one will be against Carter Sudhoff as he caught the pass, turned right into a man, and Crestview gets it back. Two fouls in this game, one either way. They go right back inside to Sheets, and Sheets gives it away. Osting with the steal. Nice pass from Henline, and it's finished by Sudoff. Pull-up jumper off the back, no good there. Taken by Nate Lickley, and now the other way. Go the Bearcats, up and in for Dylan Smith, a man that also averages double figures, 15.3 per game, goes off glass there, Scoop. Sheets gets the pass, no one in front of him as he goes up and in. It looked like 23, Carter Sudoff right there tried to jump the pass. And it's dangerous when you miss him. Spencerville takes, or excuse me, they cut into the Spencerville lead at Foul here against the Knights. That'll be against Mitch Temple. Now two fouls against the Knights. That shot no good from Dylan Cook as he was off balance. Back to work. That one tipped away. Temple got that one from behind. Stays with Spencerville. Here's Osting. Up top, Spencerville taking their time. Pull up jumper, no good for Mosting. There's a three from Etzler. First basket of the night for Gavin Etzler. 
And he ties the score at seven, doing what he does best. Now a jump ball. I know they're actually going to get a foul against Spencerville here. All right, correction. It's a 30-second timeout. We got it here as the score is tied at seven apiece with four and a half to go in the first quarter. You're watching high school basketball on WOSN. And Scoop, a good start to this game. A little bit, uh, little bit sloppy at times, but both teams really doing a nice job moving the ball through their offensive sets and getting some good looks. in, uh, giving up just 46 points a game. Meanwhile, Spencerville comes in averaging over 71 points a game. So that's a team that wants to get out and transition, try to get the ball to the shooters beyond the arc and catch and shoot rhythm. They do that. They're awfully lethal as their numbers show. Sorry for any technical difficulties there. We're having some trouble with some microphone work, but Evan and Scoop back with you here as that ball skipped across to Dylan Smith. Smith goes baseline. Good ball movement here. Osting tries the three. That goes in and out. Crestview quickly in transition. Send it back to Carson Hunter. Temple dribbling up top. Guarded by Osting. Again, we see Crestview just kind of taking their time getting into their offensive sets. Well, right now, uh, seeing a very aggressive man-to-man -man defense here from Spencerville. And Crestview needs to try to spread things out, look for those one-on-one -on -one opportunities, try to get some dribble penetration. Hunter goes baseline. Good defense there as he puts the shot up, can't hit. Mitch Temple grabs the rebound. Henline quickly the other way, spins inside, off balance, sends it outside. That was Osting, gives it up to Dylan Smith. Smith picked up his dribble, but gets it to Osting. Spencerville running with four on the perimeter. Sutoff working inside. Henline, no look pass. Caden Orr and Orr travel. Well, tremendous defense that time by the Knights, particularly Nate uh, Lickley that time, uh, locked in one on one. We talked about that uh, driveline defense. That was a great example right there as Lickley was able to really shut down any penetration, force the turnover. Nice pass there. Inside goes Nasir Easterling, who just checked in. Shot no good. Still 7 7 on the Charles River scoreboard. The other way goes Dylan Smith, and he puts in the tough shot. Wow, what a move there by the 6'2 junior, Dylan Smith. You can see why he was second team Northwest Conference a year ago, and he is up this game. That was a tough shot on the run. Gets it to go. 9-7, Spencerville on top, not for long. Three-pointer good there from Lickley. And Crestview takes the lead back 10-9. Well, Crestview gets a chance to shoot and catch in rhythm. They're awfully lethal coming in, shooting just above 44% from beyond the arc. There's a great entry pass inside by Carter Orr. And a tremendous finish. Spencerville back on top by one. Four points now for Carter Sutoff. Crestview working up top. This is Jarrett Harding. Now inside, Easterling backs his way in, gets a man in the air, goes up. Might have been blocked, but a good job by Mitch Temple keeping it in. He tries the three, and he gets it. Oh, what a hustle play by Mitch Temple, and that time it led to second-chance points and three big ones there on the board for the Knights. They're back on top. Henline gets to the rim, turns, fires off the backboard, no good. Temple and he's bumped and fouled up top. That'll be the second foul against Spencerville. The first called against Dylan Smith. Yeah, I like how Mitch Temple is really trying to uh, create some offense down there with his dribble penetration. That time he draws the contact, and that'll be the uh, first foul of the night here on the Bearcats. Toss it in from the side, Jarrett Harding. 
Gives it up to Hunter. Hunter over to Isaac Klein. Klein picked up his dribble, but sends it over to Harding. Nice fake there. Carson Hunter into the paint. Gives it out to Easterling. That one short, knocked away by Spencerville. Pardon me, that is. Okay, we'll stay with Crestview. Right now, Crestview doing an excellent job of incorporating some pump fakes, some ball fakes, and then they're doing a nice job of breaking down that defense. At that time, they had a nice uh, dish. Good mid range jumper just bounced out. They'll get a second chance right here. Here's Etzler surrounded by three defenders as he gives it up to Hunter. So he will back up and start over. Here's Klein. Etzler to the corner. Hunter catch and shoot. That one's short. Rebound collected by Carter Orr. Now Spencerville hosting down to the block. And line against Etzler. Pen line with the body gets inside. Five points for Henline as he ties it back at 13. Oh, what a beautiful move there by Henline. He had the one-on-one. -on -one. He took it. Great job of using body to protect the basketball. Tough shot, the left hand off the window. 15 seconds to play, first quarter of action. Here's Harding. And a foul called against Crestview. Call that against Connor Sheets as you get a look at the carry insurance replay of that layup. Thank you to carry insurance for sponsoring our instant replay, proudly investing in our youth programs and our community. That's carry insurance. Eight seconds on the clock now. Osting sends it over to the wing. This is Sensiball. Sensiball inside shot up at the buzzer. And it's wide right taken by Blake Summers. And that does it for the first quarter. At the end of one, your Charles River scoreboard reads 13-13 between Crestview and Spencerville. Right here on WOSN, second quarter coming up after this. Tonight's premier sponsor is Matt's Heating and Cooling. Is your home in the energy efficient zone? Call Matt's Heating and Cooling or go to callmattsheating.com to schedule your free estimate. Our scoreboard is presented by Charles River in Spencerville. The premier pharmaceutical and chemical research facility in Northwest Ohio is hiring. Visit jobs.criver.com to apply today. Welcome back to Spencerville High School. 13-13 the score as Dylan Smith missed the layup to start the quarter. Evan Skilleter and Scoop Miller with you tonight. Inside they go and Sheets with another bucket inside. He's four for four from the field, and he's looking good getting some easy buckets. Yeah, he's doing a nice job there with the two-man game pick and roll. That time uh, received a nice bounce pass there, was able to take it up strong off the glass. Summers pass taken away by Jarrett Harding. Harding to the basket. He's fouled, and he misses the layup. That'll be the third of the game against Spencerville, the first called against Josh Henline, and a look at the carry insurance replay here. Uh, great defense possession once again there uh, for the Knights. As Harding's able to uh, get the steal and a run out. And Henline foul trying to save an easy deuce. And it pays off there as the first one bounce off the iron. But again, that was the concern coming in there uh, for Spencerville, you know, limiting those turnovers especially those light ball turnovers that might lead to runouts. Right now, the Crestview defense coming up big as Harding's able to connect on the back end. And uh, he gives his teammates a three-point lead here. We'll have a few more substitutions coming in. Spencerville back to work, trailing by three. Here's Henline on the wing. Passes it up to Osting, now Henline. Henline steps into a mid-range jumper. That's no good. Fight for the rebound ultimately falls to Carson Hunter. Now Etzler gets things started for Crestview. He sends it over to Mitch Temple. Temple back to Etzler. As we've seen most of the night, the Knights being patient, moving the ball around the perimeter, trying to get Sheets inside. Now they send it in. Sheets 
through some contact. That's better defense inside that time by Carter Sutoff. Spencerville able to keep it, but only briefly. Temple takes it away. That's Hunter, excuse me. Hunter traveled. He landed before he got that pass away. Yeah, that time he kind of picked it up in no man's land. By the time he could get rid of it, he took taken a couple steps. So both teams exchanged some turnovers. And again, you, you talked about Evan, in fact, a little bit sloppy. But again, I think you have to credit both defense doing a nice job of, of really getting into guys, trying to take away their strengths. Two minutes into the second quarter, 16-13 the score. Crestview on top as Henline looks inside, instead skips it over to Osting. Osting's pass is tipped away. You can tell right there, Sutoff really wanted that pass. Even Coach Sensible came up near half court and said, send it in. The both teams, you know, playing aggressive man-to-man. -man. Anytime you reverse the ball against aggressive man-to-man, -man, you want to try to seal your man inside, get that one-on-one -on -one matchup. But certainly a lot of physicality going on in the trenches. An offensive foul. Or pardon me, that is a defensive foul as Carson Hunter gets tacked with his second. We're going to take a look at the replay. Looked like he might have extended an arm here. Yeah, that time, uh, I think the uh, defensive foul occurred before the offensive push-off, so a break for Spencerville. Ball sent up over the top to freshman Owen Sensible. Now Smith over to Henline. Smith gets the flare screen. Smith to the baseline, nothing there. Out to Sensible, gets it right back. That's a good look, but Smith not able to finish. Offensive board goes to Orr. Henline pulls up from deep. Got backboard, missed everything else. Mitch Temple the other way. Temple guarded by Sensiball. He backs up, picks up his dribble. In some trouble now. Now he gets it away. Again, we talk about that tough defense. Guarding way out on the perimeter. Hunter goes inside. He's fouled on his way up. That'll be number two against Sutoff, number four against the Bearcats. Oh, nice strong move that time by the 6'3 senior, Carson Hunter. Watch it right here. He takes that quick first step. And there you're going to see the contact on the arm. I think if he goes straight up, he's in pretty good shape, going to force a tough shot. When he came down, made that an easy call. And there you see Hunter convert on the first of two. And right now, the Knights enjoying the largest lead of the night. Uh, for Crestview at four points. Remember, Spencerville was up by five, seven to two early. Smith comes the other way. 17-13 now the score on the Charles River scoreboard. Sense the ball, picks up his dribble, gets it to Smith. Smith picked up his dribble, now sends it inside to Orr. Orr off balance, but puts it in. Good touch from the sophomore. Uh, great backdoor cut and certainly a great find that time uh, by Spencerville. And again, uh, you're being uh, hounded aggressively. Make them pay with the back door. Good steal there taken away by Blake Summers. Smith to the corner. Three or got it. Yeah, another great pass from Dylan Smith. That time he got dribble penetration out of transition. Drew the defender. The drive and the kick, three ball corner pocket. And a foul up top. The score actually 18 to 17, Spencerville on top. And that's the thing about Spencerville. You know, they can go on a run at any time. They're going to see it right there. Beautiful execution of the drive and kick. And again, string music there on a nice looking Jay. And a quick 5 0 run after Crestview had gone up by four. And in the meantime, a foul called against Owen Sensiball. It's his first, fifth against Spencerville. As Crestview tries to get the lead back here. Inside goes Temple, and that one's no good, but a foul coming, or a foul, excuse me, and two free throws coming up. Well, that's a big time move by Temple. You see it right there. Not only did it do a great job with the ball fake, then he had a little hesitation move off the drive, was able to uh, get deep in the lane, drawing the contact. And the first of two up and in. So great job there on the finish. 
Yeah, right now, uh, things are all tied up here at 18 apiece. Sometimes technology just doesn't keep up. We've got a camera fixed on the scoreboard, and sometimes it picks up those eights as threes. So your score is 18 to 18. Crestview and Spencerville locked up, and another foul, this time on the rebound, and it's called against Jarrett Harding. It's his first team fifth against Crestview. Smith gets things started. Sensiball gets it off a screen. Now swung around for Henline. Good ball movement. Sensiball off the catch, and that one's no good. A rare miss, but an offensive board and the putback good from Blake Summers. Ah, great job by Blake Summers after a well-executed play. That time uh, they got Sensiball freed up on the stagger screen. Got a good look. Great job inside by Summers. Two offensive putbacks. Mid-range jumper there from Harding's no good. Harding ends up with it back. And a good job by the Knights getting the ball back and getting it inside to Gavin Etzler. He has five, score tied at 20. What an alert play that time by Ren Sheets. That was a tough touch pass here. And there's a great answer at the other end. And once again, out transition, Blake Summers, a 6'5 sophomore, string music from the short corner. We've got a back and forth contest here. Been a great one so far. Crestview trails 22 to 20. Harding dribbles in and sends it out to Temple. Temple guarded by Sensiball. Hands to Lickley. Lickley lost the handle, gets it back. And his pass knocked away by Summers. Henline grabs it. Now Smith. Smith goes up. Off glass in. And the foul. Wow, what a big time play by Dylan Smith and company. Started with sheer hustle at the defensive end, but look at that strength, athleticism. He's able to get the heap, hoop in the harm. And just like that, uh, we're seeing Spencerville go on another run. You see a lot of guys tried to avoid contact at the rim. He went right into the defender to draw that foul. Was able to get the free throw, but doesn't make it. 24-20 the score on the Charles River scoreboard. Just over two to play. Second quarter of action, Etzler. Inside goes Temple, Etzler tries the deep three. That goes two for two from outside for Gavin Etzler. Uh, once again, uh, Etzler uh, was freed up just enough, catch and shoot and rhythm. That time he didn't have the ball long enough to get his fingerprints on it. He's got that quick release, beautiful looking Jay there. That ends an 11-3 run there for Spencerville. One point game now, Henline goes baseline, pulls up. That's a tough angle for the basket. Both these teams are shooting lights out right now. Yeah, we've got so many athletes out there on both sides of the floor here tonight, and certainly one of them right there, Josh Henline, with that nice uh, mid-range jumper. Henline has seven. Inside goes Temple, drops it off for Sheets, and he finishes. Sheets wow. has been great inside, eight points for him. Yeah, great job again by Sheets. But what can you say about Mitch Temple there? Great dribble penetration, drops a dime there in traffic. Great execution by the Knights at the offensive end. Inside goes Summers, and he puts it in with the left hand. I tell you what, the sophomores just get more and more confidence this season. Winds on coming in tonight, averaging seven points over five rebounds. A guy that's shooting nearly 60% uh, on the season. Tough shot right there, gets it to go. 30 seconds and counting on the clock. Second quarter, they go back inside. Nothing there, but a good job waiting as Lickley went into the defender and drew the foul. Uh, what a smart play there by Nate Lickley that time. Watch the nice pass inside by Temple. Here you see the pump fake, gets the defender in the air, does a great job initiating the contact, makes that an easy call. Lickley shooting the first at two is going to go off the back of the iron. So right now the uh, Spencerville leads safe at three points. Lickley trying to cut into it here with the back end of a two-shotter. It's two fouls against Blake Summers. Seven against Spencerville. Free throw up and good. 28-26 now on the Charles River scoreboard. Spencerville on top will presumably play for the last shot here. 
with 18 on the clock. Yeah, I think you have to. The fact that uh, Crestview is going to get the basketball to start the second half. Now, here's a corner three. That's good. All alone was Evan Osting. And he gets three more for Spencerville before the buzzer. And the half ends with the Bearcats on top, 31-26. We will step aside. Second half coming up after this on WOSN. Tonight's instant replays are provided by Cary Insurance in Grover Hill, proudly investing in our youth programs and our communities. Tonight's timeouts are brought to you by Metzger Financial Services, helping you plan your financial future. Visit MetzgerFinancialServices.com. Welcome back to Spencerville, where it's 31-26 Spencerville on top in a shootout tonight. Scoop, it's been so fun to have this game. What has Spencerville done so well to have this five-point lead? They've done a great job of rebounding the basketball and getting things out in transition, which certainly was going to be a big key tonight. And right now, look for Crestview to try to make some adjustments and slow down that transition game. But again, that's probably easier said than done with the athletes that Spencerville has out there. It is only a five-point game. Crestview's done a nice job staying in this game. You can tell they're trying to get some looks for Gavin Etzler. He shoots 73% from beyond the arc. He's two for two tonight, but only eight points. Well, right now, uh, credit Spencerville. Right now, they're really concerned about giving up the three ball, particularly to Etzler. So they have kind of let things go inside. They've, they've let uh, Crestview get some one-on-one -on -one matchups inside. Thus, they've had a little bit more points in the paint than typically I think Spencerville will give up. But I think that's by design, the fact they want to try to take away Etzler, try to keep him to as minimal shots as possible. But again, uh, look for Crestview to make some adjustments to try to free up the senior sharpshooter. Crestview starts the half with the ball. They go right inside to Ren Sheets. He goes up. He puts it in. Ren Sheets with a great first half, and now he has eight points. Yeah, oh, big-time performance by Ren Sheets tonight. They're going to need it because, again, that, that physicality on both sides of the floor here is really going to come into play. You see some more of it down there. The beautiful finish there off the window. I think that was Dylan Cook, the 5'11 senior. What a nice power move. Gets it to go off the window. The man that I've only known as Pickle. The whole time I've been calling Spencerville basketball, Dylan Cook, finally a senior in a nice basket there. Crestview trying to answer at the other end with a three, and it's good. Lickley, seven points. Well, that was a great set that time and a, and a great read there from uh, Carson Hunter. And again, there's that three ball. We talked about uh, Coach Sessler probably going to make some adjustments to free his guys up. That time they hit on a big one, makes it a one possession game. Dylan Smith dribbling up top. Now he gives to Osting. Osting picks up the dribble, then gives it to Henline. Henline looking inside, now dribbles to the other side. Osting pulls up for three. That's no good. Fight for the rebound, and it ends up in the hands of Ren Sheets. Oh, what a rebound by Ren Sheets, and great transition defense that time by the Bearcats, you know. That's uh, so important. You've got to eliminate those runouts, uh, try to force them to, to earn everything. Great hustle play by the Bearcats. Crestview will take it out. Send it in for Sheets. He gives it to Mitch Temple. Now Etzler guarded by Henline. Temple will back it up. Etzler. Etzler tries to find Sheets. On the roll, instead it's Carter Sudoff taking it away, but back there to take it back is Carson Hunter. Etzler, can he go three for three? You bet. Oh, big time play by Carson Hunter. That time they had to three on two, but he knew exactly where Etzler was going to spot up. And again, the uh, drive and the kick ends up in a three. Two quick threes here in the third quarter gives Crestview the lead back. 11 points for Gavin Etzler, 34-33. Nice pass in, set off with the finish. I've been impressed with Dylan Smith, the way he's been able to move the ball and manipulate the defense. Yeah, Dylan Smith is one of the top players in the Northwest Conference, uh, no doubt about it, and uh, we're seeing that here tonight. Now Spencerville takes it away. Nice pass ahead, and that was Smith with the pass and the bucket from Evan Osteen. 
A uh, big time play by Dylan Smith. Not a lot of guys can make that kind of pass uh, under to rest and in traffic, but he drops a dime in a quick 4-0 run here by the Bearcats. Sheets goes inside as the fender got turned around. So Sheets with the easy basket, make it 10, excuse me, 12 points. He had eight in the first half and now well, 12. He's done a nice job of really using his length and again, using the backboard inside. He's got most of his looks from ground zero. Nice look inside, Sudoff misses the first, gets the second. Again, great job breaking down that uh, Crestview defense with some dribble penetration. And right now, Spencerville being very unselfish at the offensive end. They've had a lot of assists. Temple with a good fake, but he runs right into trouble. That trouble, though, ends up fouling him as Pickle, Dylan Cook came out on the closeout, and it's the first call of the half. Watch it there in the replay again. Nice uh, head and shoulders fake, the nice ball fake there, and the quick drive. And a mistake there by Spencerville. You never want to foul a jump shooter. Temple, 80% uh, uh, free throw shooter on the season, gets the first one to go. So excellent job. You can see both these teams are so well schooled in the fundamentals. And, uh, you know, Crestview, nobody does it better as far as ball faking, trying to get the defense out of position, then taking advantage. They can have that quick dribble drive. A lot of times it's just that one dribble, but if you go somewhere with that dribble, that's what you want. Pull up, take the nice mid-range jumper, and there you see the back end also go in. And uh, right now both teams uh, playing awfully hard at both ends. Temple now with five points. Smith gets back into the paint. Nice little behind the back step back as he gets it back to Henline. And line guarded by Etzler. Sense of ball. Sense of ball had some space. That's only the third two pointer he's taken all year as he makes that one look easy. That's the first one he's made. He was 0 for 2. Everything else has really been beyond the arc. He has shot one free throw in the season. But that's a beautiful move there by the freshman. Great finish. Lead back up to three. Inside they go for Easterling, but good help defense by Carter Orr. Orr's had a nice night off the bench as Henline pulls up for three. That's no good. But Orr with the rebound, puts it back up, can't finish. Etzler grabs the loose ball. And a sensible attack with a foul up top as Mitch Temple tried to get around him. That'll be number two against Spencerville, and we'll take a look at the carry insurance replay. Well, that's not the most popular call here at the uh, walk-in closet tonight, but certainly the right call, and uh, Crestview will take it out here. A lot of times those fouls up top, you see a guy get good, clean uh, touch to the basketball, but you don't see the back arm or the back shoulder running into the chest of the offensive player. And I think that's what happened right there. Here's Etzler. Finds Jarrett Harding. Now Temple pulls up from the mid-range. That's no good. Offensive rebound from Isaac Klein. Now a three from Temple. He gets that one. Well, credit Isaac Klein. That time he got the offensive rebound. Instead of trying to force it, he drew the defense, and then he had the kick out. And uh, the three ball goes in. So great execution. One more time by the Knights. Or a little shimmy as he goes up with the shot. No good. Gets his own rebound. My goodness, Carter Orr has looked great. Henline gets the screen, gets doubled, and we have a foul on the baseline. That's going to go against Crestview. Well, right now, Crestview has to find a way to compete on the glass and uh, too many second chance opportunities. That time, a nice drive there by Josh Henline. And Crestview uh, forced a foul. And now the Bearcats will take it out of bounds underneath their own basket here, trying to retake the lead. Or lost the handle, and it's going to stay with Spencerville, last touched by Easterling. Boy, it's fun to watch the uh, both teams go at it there inside. A lot of bodies, a lot of contact being made, but uh, both teams playing extremely hard. And both these teams extremely well prepared. Deep three by Orr, no good. Etzler tips the rebound over to Easterling, then gets it back. 41-41 the score on the Charles River scoreboard. A great check out in the backside that time by Gavin Etzler. Uh, didn't just rely on his uh, 
position there. He tried to improve it by checking out. Comes up with a big backside rebound. Metzler with the catch and shoot three. That's no good. A little off balance there. Sensiball picks up the rebound and takes the contact from Easterling. That's number two against Nasir Easterling. Well, that's Spencerville's game right there as you see it. They're able to uh, come up with the 50-50 uh, ball, and there you see the foul from behind. Great job by Sensiball there, trying to get things out in transition. I think that's going to be important here for Spencerville. That's where they really need to make their hay here tonight against this Crestview defense. It's really come to play. Nice cut by Sutoff, but he runs right into the defender. And an offensive foul. Sutoff now with three. It's the third against Spencerville of the half. Oh, what a play by Nate Lickley that time. He came over and helped. He knew he was going to take a big hit, but he held his ground nicely. A lot of guys will move and kind of turn and bail the other guy out. That time, Lickley there held his ground. That's a big time play. Forces the uh, turnover. And now Crestview with an opportunity to retake the lead. Temple dribbling around up top, guarded closely by Evan Osting. Now Lickley. Temple gets it back. Temple to the baseline. Sutoff helps, double teamed. He knocks it off the foot of Spencerville, so Crestview will keep possession underneath. Yeah, smart play by Mitch Temple. That time he is trapped uh, in the worst spot you could be, kind of there in the short corner. You got the extra defender with the baseline. Made a smart play. Throws it off the uh, leg. Pass inside, out of reach of the target. Taken away by Sensabaugh. Sensabaugh, look at that defense up top. That's Jarrett Harding. Now headline back out to Sensabaugh. Find some space, little scoop, no good. And Temple grabs the rebound. Looked like it took a hit to the face. Might have been just the basketball, but either way, a tough rebound. Here we go the other way. Temple up, no good. He gets it back, open look for three. That's no good either, and a foul on the rebound. That's gonna go against Connor Sheets. Well, that's a tough break. Crestview really did everything right. They got an offensive board. They did a great job of, of kicking it out behind the arc. They made the extra pass. There you see it right there. They got the look they wanted, but the ball just ribbed out there. They had a great look. And there you see the foul there on the rebound. So a huge break for Spencerville. And uh, we're still knotted here at 41. We've had many lead changes, many ties here tonight. This is the kind of game I think everybody expected coming in. Spencerville with 36 on the clock. Smith dribbles inside, left-handed layup. My goodness, what a finish with the left hand off the glass. Oh, that's a big time finish here with Dylan Smith using the left hand there. And it's a reason he's shooting over 67% from the floor coming in. That's a big hoop. And now Crestview will play for one here as Spencerville will get the basketball to start four to four. Temple goes to the right, now kicks it out to Etzler. Five on the clock. Temple up and in. And another buzzer beater for Crestview. They tie the score at 43. And that does it for the third quarter. A look at the replay as Temple finishes things off with two. After three, it's 43-43. Crestview and Spencerville all tied up. Fourth quarter coming up after this on WOSN. Tonight's premier sponsor is Matt's Heating and Cooling. Is your home in the energy efficient zone? Call Matt's Heating and Cooling or go to callmattsheating.com to schedule your free estimate. Our instant replays tonight are provided by Cary Insurance in Grover Hill, proudly investing in our youth programs and our communities. 43-43 on that Cary Insurance scoreboard. Evan Skilleter and Scoot Miller with you tonight from the walk-in closet in Spencerville as the Bearcats take the lead. It's another two points from Dylan Smith who has done a fantastic job leading his team, especially on the offensive end. Yeah, he now has 10 points. And again, he's such an intelligent player. You combine that with his athleticism, makes him a tough guard. 
Temple with a two, that's no good. His foot was on the line, didn't go in anyway. Both these teams with their eyes set on the Northwest Conference prize and a foul before the shot. So once again, another great find by Dylan Smith. You know, he came into uh, tonight's action. You know, really not one of the top assist guys, but watch it right there. Great find there. Again, uh, great vision, great floor spacing right now by Spencerville, trying to make this a two possession game here. And line will inbound, find Sudhoff, and Sudhoff didn't have anyone in front of him. Yeah, once again, uh, kind of a breakdown, one of the few times we've seen it from Crestview, but uh, that time we're able to get a nice direct pass, uh, four feet from the bucket, great finish inside again. Points in the paint starting to add up. Nice jump shot there by Etzler as he pulls up from the elbow, 13 for Gavin. Sudhoff gets it ahead. Sudhoff up and in. Now, once again, uh, Smith looking up the floor there. Great transition look from the uh, Bearcats. That's been the difference right now. And a uh, big part of their offense out of transition. Five players in double figures tonight. Sheets, one of them, misses the first, goes up with the second, and he's fouled. But you look across the board, and Spencerville with Dylan Smith at 10 points. Well, there you Sutoff see it. off at... 12, sorry. Oh, great job just staying with it inside. You know, Ren Sheets, he's another guy with his length and athleticism. Makes him a tough guard out there. That time, those were just hustle points right there. As he heads to the foul stripe, he's able to connect on the first of two. Comes in shooting uh, just 57% from the stripe. But he's done everything else so well. On the season, over 71% from the floor, leads the team in block shots. And there he connects on the back end. So a couple uh, big free throws right there. And right now, Sheets up to 14 points to lead the Knights. Mitch Temple with the 11 and Gavin Etzler with 13 to round out the players in double figures. Sheets takes a seat here. Henline picks up his dribble, sends over to Sensabaugh. Now Carter Orr and a foul. That'll be against Etzler, his first. Not too sure what happened there. Etzler takes a tumble. He's limping around after the hit. You know, that time looked like he got his feet tangled coming off the screen. One of those tough calls, but that's been a fun matchup to watch down there. Gavin Etzler and Josh Henline. You know, everybody talks about their offense. Both those guys averaging north of 19 points a game. But those two are very, not only very intelligent defensively, they play very hard at the defensive end. That's certainly a foul you're going to live with your, your head coach, Doug Etzler. They've been matched up all night, each running into multiple screens every possession. Little backdoor pass there. Smith grabs the rebound, goes up with the right. Not the rebound, but the loose ball, rather. Well, that time they overplayed. They went with the back door, and it looked like uh, Hunter had a piece of it, but just not quite enough. And Spencerville's able to stay with it. Big bucket there to get it back to a two-possession game. And we'll have a foul against Henline here. That's five against Spencerville. Henline with two. So both teams with five fouls. And we reset the timeouts for you as well. Four left for Spencerville and five left for Crestview. Another thank you to Metzger Financial for sponsoring those timeouts tonight. Well, that's such a smart play there by Etzler. He knew they were kind of in trouble on the sideline and knew he had pressure coming from behind. He did a great job of jumps and stopping and drawing the contact, made that an easy call. And good defense from Spencerville inside. Mitch Temple tried to draw contact, he did, but it was clean as the Bearcats knocked the ball out of bounds. Metzler will send it in. Here's Sheets. Sheets turns, goes up, and goes in. It's easy when you can finish about a two inches away from the basket. Well, when you're 6'6 six, six and you're athletic, you can get off the floor as quick as he does. You know, he makes it look awfully easy, but now he leads uh, all scores with 16 out there. Big time hoop there. Henline has it stripped away. Mitch Temple goes up. There's a foul. Question becomes, is the foul before or after the shot? It looked like it was on the floor, but the referee's having a chat. Yeah, he called that awfully early. They're going to call an intentional foul. You know, he did call it before the shot. 
Boy, that's a tough break because now Crestview will get two to the ball, but watch it right here. They're going to see the, the push off. I have to agree with that call. You know, uh, the smart thing would have been to just try to make a common foul before he got to that juncture, but when you extend your arms like that, it made it awfully easy. Correct these officials, you know, this is not an easy game to call. Both these teams so physical, they don't take plays off. These guys have done a great job. Another excellent call. And right now, this is the huge break for Crestview. Let's look at the second free throw to go in. There's a great job there by Mitch Temple. Convert both, and now they'll get the ball at the point of the foul, so a chance to retake the lead. We're going to have a full timeout here. And again, that's a Metzger Financial Services timeout as we step aside. Score tied up 51-51 here in the fourth quarter. We'll be right back with more on WOSN after this. Our premier sponsor is Matt's Heating and Cooling. Is your home in the energy efficient zone? Call Matt's Heating and Cooling or go to callmattsheating.com to schedule your free estimate. Our scoreboard tonight is presented by Charles River in Spencerville. The premier pharmaceutical and chemical research facility in Northwest Ohio is hiring. Visit jobs.criver.com to apply today. Tonight's timeouts are brought to you by Metzger Financial Services, helping you plan your financial future. Visit MetzgerFinancialServices.com. Tonight's instant replays are provided by Cary Insurance in Grover Hill, proudly investing in our youth programs and our communities. Welcome back. Five minutes left in the fourth quarter. Spencerville and Crestview tied up at 51. Evan Skilleter, Scoot Miller, and a host of WOSN crew members, the best in the business, with you tonight as this three from the corner goes. Oh, Nate great Lickley. execution out of the timeout there by the Knights attacking that 2-3 Spencerville zone. Three ball corner pocket and a nice little run here right now by Crestview. Smith with the jump shot, no good. Good rebound there by Carson Hunter. Three-point lead for the Knights. They've trailed for a lot of the second half. Here's Etzler. Remember the next uh, Spencerville foul will put the Knights uh, in the bonus. So right now, uh, Spencerville has to be smart defensively. You know that uh, Crestview going to be a little bit more deliberate. There's a great play there by Evan Osting there. And there's a great assist up ahead, and they'll get the end one. A good finish from Josh Henline. Kind what? of a similar play that we saw recently on the other end, except for this time Henline was going up for the shot. We'll get a look at it here, a nice pass ahead. Yeah, not many guys can make this kind of pass. You're just dropping a dime. You talk about throwing a touchdown pass, and look at the athleticism there by Henline. Kind of fading away, got fouled, and had to go to his left hand there. He's able to get the nice soft touch off the window. And both these teams are going to certainly be in the hunt for the league tile this year. The fact that they can play defense, but what a play there by Osting. That leads to the uh, three-point play. And once again, we have another tie, this time at 54. Ten line now into double figures with 10. That's three players from either team in double figures. Etzler loses it on the way up. That time, Spencerville went back to the man-to-man -man defense. And line, nice pass to the cutter. That was Evan Osting, not able to finish. Loose ball tapped over to Dylan Smith. Smith to the baseline, tries to keep it in, and it hits Ren Sheets. And right now, Spencerville really doing a great job on the offensive glass. That time they got an offensive rebound they really had no business getting, and now they'll get an extra possession and a chance to retake the lead. There you see the nice hesitation move and fortunate to uh, get that ball back. Henline comes off a screen, quick shot, that's no good. And Spencerville trying to keep it in, but Temple comes over to grab it. 54-54, just over three to play. Temple stops, sets things up. Etzler. Nice pass to Sheets. Sheets goes up and over the D. Yeah, great execution. That time uh, we saw Sheets just kind of slip the screen. And uh, Etzler recognized it. But once again, Bearcats 
go right after them in transition. That's just an alert play there. A lot of time guys will hang their heads for a second or two, but not this Spencerville team. That's a big time play. And just like that, they'll get a chance to knock things up as they'll be shooting uh, two here at the line, trailing by two. Seven fouls against Crestview. It was number three called against Mitch Temple. As Osteen hits the first, the chance to tie with the second. And Osteen just 53% on the season, but looked anything but that on the first one. And the second, he connects on a pair. And we have another tie, this time at 56. Temple dribbles up, crosses the timeline. Here's Etzler at the Bearcat. Now Temple, Sheets tries to post up. The defense from Spencerville. Etzler waiting for his squad to move around. Smith tries to jump the pass. Now almost a travel, looked like it was, but the referees say no. Here's Hunter, guarded by Henline. Temple backs it out, Lickley off two screens. Good possession here from Crestview, nothing going on, so just running it around their set. Here's Sheets, Etzler. How about the patience here, Scoop? Yeah, doing a great job. A lot of screens being set, a lot of communication here by Spencerville defensively. There they come up the steal. They double down on the entry pass to the low post. And Henline, good job drawing contact there. You could tell exactly what he was trying to do as Hunter had his feet set, and Henline just went right around him to draw the foul. Now watch it right here. You're going to see the, the reach in there with that right hand makes an easy call, and uh, everything here on out will be one-on-one uh, -on -one here until we get to 10. Henline, 56% free throw shooter on the season. Misses that one. The rebound falls to Mitch Temple. Score stays tied at 56. And Coach Etzler takes another Metzger Financial Services timeout. So 124 left here in the fourth quarter. Score tied at 56 as we take a look at the upcoming schedule on WOSN. Catch Sports Report tonight at 10 p.m. And then at 11, following Sports Report, it's Wapakoneta versus Ottawa Glandorf in WBL opening night on Saturday at 8.30. Check out Defiance and St. Mary's as Mr. Austin Parks gets going in the WBL. And at 10 p.m., it's Ottoville against this Spencerville team. On Sunday, check out Wapak against Marion Local and Girls Action at 6 p.m. And at 7.30, it's Kaleida against Van Wert. Make sure you check out our new app available on the Apple App Store and the Roku app. And stream WOSN 24-7, a perfect gift for Christmas time, the gift of local sports for a $100 annual donation. Sign up on our app at app.wosn.tv, or again, you can download the Roku or Apple TV app. Back to action here with 120 to go. Mitch Temple sends it inside for the Knights, but it goes right off the foot of Evan Osting, and it'll be a baseline out of bounds play coming up for Crestview. Etzler sends it over the top to Ren Sheets. Sheets has been a little quieter in this second half, but still sitting at 12 points. Sorry, 18 points for the Knights. Right now, Spencerville off the aggressive. Your crest, you have to beat passes right now. They're trying to get in that passing lane, anticipating where that next pass is going. You've seen a lot of deflections, a couple kicks here in the last couple minutes. Crestview's got a chance to play for the last shot here. At this point, you might as well. Although Temple looking for Sheets. What a play by Henline there. He reads that like a book, comes up the steal, and now it's Spencerville that may wind it down. Yeah, and Coach Sensabaugh saw that trap coming, and so he called the Metzger Financial Services timeout as we take a look at the steal. 
Look at that read there by Handline. There he comes out. He looks like he's really kind of coming out to uh, try to, to cover the perimeter, having to be in the right place at the right time. But uh, what a play by the senior. And then uh, Crestview got to tie up there at half court, alert timeout by Spencerville. Another look at some upcoming games on WOSN next week on Wednesday. Liberty Benton and Ottawa Glandorf girls go head to head. And then at 10 p.m. on Friday, you can catch Crestview against Columbus Grove girls. And then Sports Report on WTLW at 10 p.m. next Friday. You can also see St. Mary's against Wapak at 11 p.m. You'll hear my voice again on that one. And on Saturday at 2.30, it's Adrian and Albion women's basketball. And then at 7 p.m., Columbus Grove and Crestview boys face off. Columbus Grove, another team in the Northwest Conference that has their eyes on the top spot here. There are a lot of teams in the NWC that have a shot at that title, but we're looking at two really good contenders here. Yeah, these are certainly two heavyweights. And in case you're wondering, the last Bearcat win against the uh, Knights came back on February 17th, 2017, a 43-41 thriller in Convoy. But since that time, Crestview's won five straight. 25 seconds on the clock. Dylan Smith dribbling around for Spencerville. Bearcats looking to take the last shot. Can Crestview hold and send this to overtime? Now Coach Sensabaugh takes another Metzger financial timeout with 14 on the clock. He'll draw something up. 14 second play, Scoot Miller. Well, right now, if you're Spencerville, this is where you want to be. You've got all your options available here, and uh, you've got the ball, a chance to play for the last shot. He talked about the or we talked about the Crestview upcoming schedule at Columbus Grove game looming next Friday. Before that, they take on Fort Jennings on Tuesday and then a week break until they take on Delphus St. John's at the Vatican. For Spencerville, they will host Ottoville tomorrow night, which we said you can see on WOSN. Then Friday, they'll be at Northwest Conference Faux Lipsick, and then they will travel to Kaleida, so two Putnam County matches coming up for this Bearcats team. 14 seconds now, Smith gets it in the back court. Smith to the left, Smith gets a screen from Sudoff. Smith passes inside, Sudoff's alone, he scores! 5-4, and a timeout taken with 3.5. It's a simple pick and roll, and no one paying attention to Carter Sudoff. Yeah, watch it here in the replay. Got away with maybe a high dribble, but again, uh, that time a breakdown defensively by Crestview. And another bucket in the paint here for the Bearcats. Can't come at a better time as they retake the lead. And this is what happens when you have a player like Josh Henline. We call him gravity players in basketball, right? A guy that's on the far side. He's attracting the attention of all the help. And so Sudoff just has an open lane straight to the basket. And credit coach uh, Kevin Sensiball as well you know he started howling right away get over here you saw three guys run there to the strong side and then you saw the nice uh, pick and roll game well executed there was no help there because they were all swarming out the headline so great execution this has been a chess match all night and the only question now is did they score too soon so Crestview will have three about three and a half seconds to score here. They trail by two, 58-56. Spencerville trying to hand Crestview their first loss of the season. And as Scoop just said, it would be their first win against the Knights since 2017. And remember, Spencerville has no fouls to give, so they have to be very smart here. Look for the ball to come in to uh, Gavin Essler and just let the senior try to make a play. And it's 4.1 on the clock and in the pass Knocked down by Sudoff. And there should be at least some time off the clock here. Well, they're trying to run the home run play where you get it to half court and then you kick it out to your guards coming. But here's that pick and roll executed to perfection there. Look at the pass inside and again, all alone inside, uncontested. And right now, I think we got a question of how much time is going to be put back on the clock. So there's 4.1 seconds on the clock. When that play started, they run 0.3 off, so it's 3.8. Sutoff guarding the inbounder. Sutoff stands at six foot six. 
Yeah, I think they want to try to get it into half court to, to maybe rent Sheets. They do throw it to half court. Sheets catches it, wants to call a timeout. He did. The clock kept going. Spencerville wants a travel because Sheets just kind of shuffled his feet to find a referee to call timeout to. He called it with about 2.5 on the clock. Let's see what happens he here. Called it. We'll get a look on our replay. Watch it here. He's going to call a timeout. Then he's going to move his feet before the whistle's blown. But right there, you see it. It's just a matter of when did they grant the timeout? And how much time are they going to allow here? So they do give the timeout, which means they can't call the travel. And I would assume about 2.5 based on our replay. We'll see what they end up doing. So they'll have now a play to run from a little bit closer. I would assume the attention from the defense will be on Gavin Etzler, but we saw what happens at the other end. If you focus on a hot shooter, sometimes things happen away from that. So 2.2 on the clock. It'll be Carson Hunter to inbound. Crestview gets it in. To shots up, and it's in and out as close as it gets for Nate Lickley, but he can't finish, and the fans are on the court as Spencerville knocks off Crestview 58 to 56. How about this last play? Well, watch it right there. They got a decent look, a tough shot under duress. He was right on track, just catches a little bit of the iron, rims out. Uh, wow, what an ending to what a game here. And Spencerville snaps a five-game losing skid to the Knights. They pick up an impressive win here to start out Northwest Conference play. 58-56, Spencerville wins this one. We will step aside, but only briefly. Stay tuned because the Stolle Insurance Hustle Award is coming up after the break right here on WOSN. Welcome back to Spencerville where the Bearcats win by two, but Crestview and Nate Lickley this close, Scoot Miller, to winning this game. Well, they say baseball is a game of inches, but I think you can chalk that up to basketball, too, because that shot was an inch or two from going in, and that would have been a uh, Crestview win. But uh, both these teams left it all out there. You know, both coaches certainly got to be proud of the effort tonight. I certainly know head coach Doug Esther going to be disappointed in the way it finished, but certainly not in the effort of his kids. What an impressive win for Coach Kevin Sensible's guys. They came out. They had to play the full 32 minutes, and it was just enough as they snap a five-game losing skid to the Crestview Knights. And you can check out highlights of tonight's Stolle Hustle Award winner on the WOSN YouTube page. And I'll tell you what, Scoop, we have a lot of guys we can choose from. Sometimes it's not all about points. The, the point leader was Carter Sudoff in this one, but Dylan Smith for Spencerville looked fantastic. He really did. There were so many guys on both sides of the ledger tonight, very deserving, but uh, what a great performance by the 6'2 junior Dylan Smith. You know, he got it done at both ends. He was one of those uh, leaders out there with his hustle. He got on the floor for those 50-50 balls. He got some rebounds he had no business getting. He had some great assists tonight, too. Just an all-round performance. So our congratulations goes out to Dylan Smith on his efforts today. I want to thank the athletic department here at Spencerville, including Kelly Williams, who does such a great job hosting all of these different media crew members to these games, a great facility at Spencerville. Also want to thank our crew, including director Ben Reif. On replay tonight, it was Megan Sherrick as you get a look at the truck. And we also had Lexi Waddle, Caitlin Henderson, and Clay Jordan on cameras tonight. And as always, a thank you to you, the viewer, for tuning in to High School Basketball on WOSN. Again, your final from Spencerville. It's the Bearcats 58. It's the Knights 56 for Scoop Miller. I've been Evan Skilleter signing off. Have a great night and God bless.